And go for it, Tim. Let me do that. Yeah, I should always be better prepared, I think, when I... I'm not. Hang on. Wasting valuable time here. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. You ready to play again? Yeah, let's play. Okay, should see my notes page. Let me see if I can pump that up to being real. And then I want to bring my little camera back. So Jimmy, not if you see my my full screen PowerPoint and then the MD4000 kind of hovering in the middle there. Yep. Uh, yes, indeed. OK. <clears throat> now we will uh, try and wrap this up today. Um, had a lot of promises, I think, in all honesty, as we've been progressing, <clears throat> you know, uh, I have to go with my my mentor Yoda um, here on his uh, teach little teach it well, uh, you know, um, I don't want to get in too much of a hurry. Um, I know we've got next week, possibly, you know, I'm not trying to take dibs on that time, but if uh, if there's more interest, we can kind of proceed on. But I think we're, we're pretty focused on really voltage more than anything this week. And I'd like to kind of stay there and, and play with it. We didn't get, <clears throat> excuse me, as far through the, the demos as I wanted to um, yesterday. So uh, we should get through them all today. And, and uh, um, we're back to our practice and what we preach. You know, if we uh, repeat stuff, and, and I, su uh, I guess suggest you do that with your students, um, they eventually, the more you repeat it, the better they'll get it. So just a reminder, this isn't necessarily a, um, you're gonna learn a whole lot about electricity. This is more of a, you know, just a couple ways, or I guess, couple instructors ways of uh, trying to present it and not scare um, new learners off so um, let's kind of review you know we we uh, we introduced a lot I guess to a student you know Jeff if you were brand new into this game you know um, a lot of new words came down the, the pike today or this week a, a new vocabulary you know we had to uh, Volts, voltage, voltage drops, electromotive force, and amps, amperage, intensity, current, ohms, resistance, you know, both in unintended and intended. Um, kind of dumped a bunch onto the, the new learner. And then we tried to try to focus, you know, a little bit on um, on voltage this week. You know, we uh, probably have the school of thought that I don't like to go right into Ohm's law and try and start teaching that, you know, in my, uh, my presentation on Tuesday. Um, showed how confusing that can be. No one, no one likes math, or well, whatever. They say they don't, um, and definitely algebra, you know. And then we, you, you start pulling that into an electricity uh, conversation before you really show them what these relationships are. And, and uh, I think there's a, a wall that goes up, um, probably based on past experience of you know their success rate with math. So we uh, want to focus on voltage this week. Um, uh, and we're going to, you know, can't help but give a, a side order of amperage and resistance, but uh, I think voltage is where we're going to kind of continue today. And, and uh, I want to give you guys some some teaching techniques that, that um, you should have your students practice over and over and again over because it uh, it's the only way they're going to get sharper and sharper at this. You know, we talked about it being electrical push-ups, you know, um, just continuing to, to work out and get stronger at, at this so that when and they do approach a car they're not totally uh um, bewildered or, or they have a direction and that's all we really want to do i want to give them you know a couple um, real simple tests that, that points them in the right direction so um that's kind of where we're at today um we talked jeff didn't we uh, i guess i did probably <laughs> a couple models you know that we used to introduce electricity um talked well, about the water model a lot of them didn't, you know, a lot of them had a lot of deficiencies in, in application, so. I, I usually, in, in, for the last several years, the uh, teaching in the classroom situation, uh, I had a baggie with a switch and a wire and a battery, you know, and make the, make the light bulb light up. And that all stemmed from a, <clears throat> a recording I saw of uh, Harvard graduating or some Ivy League college graduating class of engineers 
that were given a light bulb and a piece of wire and a, a D cell battery and asked to light the light bulb up. And these were engineering and, graduates. And that was and, on graduation night, wasn't it? That was when on they're walking around there. Yeah. And their cap and gowns. That's hilarious. Yes. And initially, none of them can make the light bulb work. Um, so we have to assume that our students can't make the light bulb work either. And so to start with that simple, very, very simple concepts, and then almost the point of being uh, agitating to the students, I would continue that to make sure that uh, I asked the question 15 different directions just to make sure that, you know, we understand a complete part of the circuit and that we want to get to troubleshooting soon. So that's why Tim's focusing on voltage because we want to do voltage drop tests. Well, you know, if we give an employability skill that they're that they're comfortable with and good at when they go on internship or actually to a job, then I mean, uh, I think that's not that, uh, that's probably the best we can hope for out of our yes our endeavors here. You know, um, and and you know, it's all about everything. I think first impressions and things like that too. If you scare them off with a lot of uh, formulas and math, then um, <clears throat> they're going to shut down. So. Yeah. I know I did, and, and, and I, maybe I'm relating it too much to my own learning style, but uh, that's how I felt, too. So, you know, so we, we talked about the water model. Don't want to do that again. Look it up. It, it's, it's, a, it's been used for years. You know, we talked about becoming one with electricity, you know, kind of played on that a lot. Um, you know, I made a note here to bring up Zen. Any, any of y'all ever read the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance? Um should read it as a as a mechanic a technician it's a you know I'm, I'm not a, into zen but i sure like the idea of what they're talking about it's just basically becoming one with technology don't be overwhelmed by it um, learn it and become part of it and and be able to deal with it and so you know i made this uh, this image of <clears throat> that we were looking through a wire we were becoming an electron and we were going to look through the, the the wires of a circuit and we could see really the entire path back to the battery, we could see any points uh, on our travels that would require um, voltage to be used or, you know, or dropped is probably the industry term. You know, and so this kind of allowed us really as electricity to ration out our voltage, you know, according to the 12.66 the that we left the battery with. So I think, uh, um, you know, we, Jeff in particular, is is really adamant about what we've talked about before um i mean already today the importance of practice practice and continuing to practice that so i think that's where we're going to go today we're going to kind of lightly touch the, the 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 two or three demos i got through yesterday and um i've got probably a total of seven of them that i want to want to show you so that we can kind of wrap this thing up so um you know we're, we're talking about being able to have an expectation when you read your dvom um, I used to use the analogy of a of a air, airline pilot when you're learning how to fly airplanes. You fly, you know, in in a clear weather, you know, with your uh, pilot, and you can look outside and 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 get you know that visual to be able to uh, fly your plane. Eventually, you move to in, instrument flight rating, and they actually put you in put you in a hood, so to speak, to where you can only see the gauges on your dash, and you know <clears throat> you have to rely on your gauges. You have to trust them. And your your uh, instructor will take your take the yoke from you and just twist it and put you into some spiral, and then tell you to pull it out. You have to believe that your gauges are you know you, you bring your gauges back where they're supposed to be. You will be flying level again, and um, I want that somewhat um, I guess uh, ability when uh, our students walk out to a car with a meter. I want them to be able to plug in, have an expectation, <clears throat> and trust that that expectation isn't lying to them. So, yeah, yep. I think that's critical, Tim, that, that they have a plan. Um, and in fact, one of the local businesses here, uh, rebuilder of rotating electrical, uh, you know, I've told the story a lot to 30 years ago, he came to me and said, man, uh, my return rate of those things that are returned like a starter, and it just comes back in a box that says, don't work. <laughs> And um, he, he 
determined the same thing that we've determined uh, with our uh, canvassing shops and, and technicians is that people mostly cannot accomplish a simple voltage drop test. And we turned that into a 12 point test for my students uh, that when they graduate, they could do a starting charging system test, test the battery, do a starting and charging system test in two tenths. That was, they practiced all they could so that, and we, we spent a great deal of time on this so that they could bring their meter out and go to a vehicle and do these things. And in fact, I asked shop owners and other technicians that were interviewing my students to test them on this. So bring them into the show, yeah. <clears throat> tell them what's going to happen, show them what's going to happen, teach them how to do what's happening, and also impress upon them that you can most of the time you can do this in less than two tenths that's 12 minutes and if you can so, so, you know that, that's a revenue yeah that's a revenue generation if, from a shop point of view yeah if you can show this to the shop owner you, you know you, you've got to uh, you're a keeper uh -huh. to have around yep well let's go to the, <clears throat> the shop so to speak we're gonna use our uh, console lab md4000 which is a modular um, electrical trainer um, and, and I like it because like I said in the past couple of days we can just put what we want to talk about in front of us and get rid of all the rest of the stuff I'm pretty easily distracted when I'm trying to focus on real simple stuff with with people who everything looks foreign to them I want just what I'm talking about in front of their face so <clears throat> we will uh, we'll start there um, do this okay so I've got my camera focused on the trainer here um, first thing I want to do is like we did yesterday I want to build a just a simple circuit with a, a switch and a light bulb and um, <clears throat> so I want to say not rocket science here but we're going to come down to the switch go into the switch we're going to leave the switch go to the bulb and then we're going to complete the the circuit there and like yesterday if uh turn the power on that's my battery here basically i've already got it set at a certain voltage we'll measure here in a second i'm going to go ahead and take my dvom lead and actually stab it at the battery right now so we're ready to go and i'm going to set my meter on uh, dc volts with a 20 volt range i believe <clears throat> so turn the switch on everything works great okay this uh um three-point test that we talked about <clears throat> that is a just a great tool to have in a, in a student's box and like I said an employability skill is it also kind of gives them a strategy of where to how to get started on a problem so we're going to look at known good first and then we're going to go in and, and actually put some resistances in there and show how it, it can be caught but for right now um, what's the first thing we check Jeff I want to make sure I got a battery that's uh, that's worthwhile so I'm going to take my uh, my DVOM and I'm going to go. I've already have it grounded here at the battery, and I'm going to test the battery and just see what kind of source voltage we have. <clears throat> Twelve six three. I'm pretty Lock. happy. Okay. Yep. Okay. Second step in, in 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 diagnosing the circuit. And like I said, this is a known good one, but I want to just do the 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 process first. We have a lot of places I can um, let me do this. We have a lot of places I can measure now. How do I simplify that to where we're actually getting some information that's going to um, tell us a direction and not waste a lot of time? Second step would be? Uh, test at the load. Uh, I always want to go as close to the load as possible. And, um, you know, a good step to do that would be to uh, check the source voltage, um, but also be able to discern uh, on either side of that load, what is the source voltage and what is not? So this, in this particular <clears throat> um, trainer, this is about as close to the source load uh, as I can get. This was the load the circuit's designed to for in the first place. I mean, customer needs a light, so the engineers uh, put together a battery, wiring, a switch, and a light, and now the customer has a light. 
we're going as close as we can to it and we're going to take our first measurement and the rule like i said and it's a rule is it's always going to be you're always your expectation is it's always going to be as close to source voltage as possible yes so as i test here we were at we were at 1263 i'm at 1262 and i'm pretty happy about that yep. next step to and, and so this is a three-step process so we have one more step that's going to tell me exactly circuit integrity i guess whether there's a problem or whether it's good and the next step is what at the ground side of the load so i'm going to go just past the load and i'm looking for really all that voltage to have been used up at at the bulb or dropped as the industry says i want most of the voltage to be dropped here at the bulb so i'm coming on the back side of it and i'm getting um a, a zero reading um, i said as close to zero <clears throat> this is where you can spend some time with your students because it's a matter of uh, <clears throat> decimal points i see a light lit i know there's current flowing i'm seeing a zero voltage how can that be let them explain let them talk about it then it's a matter of taking your meter out to a little bit. It's, it's like zooming out with your uh, um, camera. I'm going to move the decimal point back to the other side and bring it in from the left. <clears throat> and in reality, we've got 2.5, but it's millivolts now. We've focused really in on this and, and, and uh, um, I guess gotten a smaller measurement. So we have close to zero coming out of the load and <clears throat> in a, um, I guess in a diagnosing or diagnostic process i've made three simple measurements and i see the bulb is lit i can 99.9 percent .9 say that there's nothing wrong with this circuit yeah correct i agree okay so next step is <clears throat> let's uh let's do this so what what you demonstrate i think is important to the cir uh, <laughs> the circuit to the student uh, as well that you've demonstrated a, a working circuit so that the brain has a point of reference um, and they're going to see of course if you lit up this the stoplight portion of the bulb above that you know it would be a much brighter light uh, there would be uh, more of a voltage drop since we're just talking about voltage there would be more right. of a voltage drop on that measurement and then you're also reinforcing the, the most important uh, rule in, in the voltage drop testing is, and I used to make a, I got this from Dave Saylor actually, I gotta give Dave the credit. I was in his class one time and, and when Dave repeats things, he always repeats them three times and he, he waits mm -hmm. for, I'm sure some of you have experienced this. And he said, okay, and I would have my students do this, put your hands together, close your eyes, look up the ceiling and say, no current flow, no voltage drop. No current flow, no voltage drop. No current flow, no voltage drop. And I would make this goofy game out of it with the students so that they really wouldn't forget it because here's this old man up there with his eyes closed and his hands folded together and he's talking to the ceiling, <laughs> right? But whatever it takes. It's your mantra. <laughs> well, and I said, I always joke with my students, I want them to get a tattoo that said voltage drop is the, the loss of voltage by passing current through resistance. And the point being, we need all three players for you to do an accurate voltage drop. So let's play on a good circuit, a voltage drop. We've got, uh, since I've already, I'm already stabbed on the, the negative post of the battery, I'm going to do what we call a ground reference voltage drop. And in reality, we've kind of already done that. I've come down here and checked here, and I'm refer. Um, you know, we said yesterday it's important to for your students to know when you're doing a voltage test that what this meter is really reading is the difference between this lead and that lead, yep. and that's all it knows. It doesn't have a brain to calculate anything else. It just knows that there's negative, and I'm coming in on the positive side. The difference is 12.6 volts, and and when I go to the other side, I'm getting zero. A ground reference voltage drop means that I'm going to actually take that first calculation and subtract the second one to find out how much was dropped over the load. I can validate that by actually picking up the leads now. And I like this because this is proving things. This isn't just stopping at the first clue and going to the service advisor and trying to make a sale. This is coming back and saying, okay, I want to 
be 100% sure that this is dropping the voltage over the light. So I'm going to move my lead back to there and move this lead to here. And I'm going to let the meter do the math for me instead of doing two readings and having to, to do it on in my head or whatever. Make sense? Yep. So now we can actually take this dude and, and go test all parts of the circuit that same way. And I like leaving the negative closer to the end of the circuit so that you don't get a negative sign on your meter. But I'm going to come out of the battery and I'm going to test this wire right here. And, and I'm seeing very, very small amount of a voltage drop, which another day's lesson but you know there's a certain amount through the size of the wire the length of the wire the heat the temperature of the wire etc cetera, etc cetera, and perhaps even the load on the wire um but right now you know when i first started i guess when i was you know, i joked about when i was working on cars i don't know that i really understood this because in reality it's like you're taking a measurement you're, you're taking two measurements on the same wire what would you get why would you get anything and and so i, I kind of have this this analogy this bird on a wire thing and and just because i think i'm funny i used to say like you said my students maybe remember i called a bird on the wire but the end result is why how can a bird sit on a power line with both feet and not just roast himself to death and it's because there's no potential difference between both feet he's on the same side of the circuit and so we're kind of doing the same thing with this we're on the same side of the circuit and and it isn't a drop it shouldn't be if there's a reading there, then it indicates a problem because it's intended to just be a path, not a load. I can come down here and, and continue just to pick these two up, move to the next set of test points, plug in, and I'm checking really over the switch right now. Is there any loss by this switch? Yes. Okay. And there should be. But, yeah. I mean, it's a it's two pieces of metal touching each other. The electrons have to actually physically leave one substance and go to another. There has to be some amount of effort that, to, to do that, but it should be very nominal. I mean, switches are the quality of switches and et cetera have to have to uh, have made up for all that. Probably on an old 50 something car and you do this, you'd see a little bit more. And again, the, the more demand you put on it, the more this is going to be um, tested, too. You're, you're, you're really loading the circuit up and, and you're going to really push it to its limit and see, you know, what kind of voltage drop it has. But for now, this is what's designed for the circuit. That's how I want to test it. I don't need to put a starter on that, on this deal and try and crank it and see if, you know, what kind of voltage drop. I, I know the lights, what it's designed to do. That's the circuit I want to play with. Teacher? Yes. Uh, could you do an experiment for me, teacher? Yo. Could could you grab the voltage knob and uh, turn it down to where maybe you would see like five volts and we could measure, see that measurement? So, no, 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 oh, no. Sorry. Nope. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about now. Sorry. So let's go back up to here. Uh, you got to show. Are you saying? No. Show me the, the you, two, two and a half millivolts that you have in that okay. voltage drop. Yeah, it was oh, one, one. Actually, sorry, it was actually one on the switch. You're right. One. You know, let one. me go around the world again here one more time, just yeah. because. Golly. <laughs> I will. I'm like this with the remote on the TV too. So there okay, you. go ahead. Sorry. Now, turn the voltage down and watch the relationship on the on the meter screen. And the. So I'm going to drain the battery basically. Yep, yeah, and watch the intensity of the light bulb. So this is a visual that I, I really love to do with students right here, is that uh, obviously there's uh, less voltage. And wow, there's less voltage drop because there, there is less voltage in the circuit. So relationships are really, and it's anything that we can do that's visual to relate to that darn meter because that thing just that just spits out numbers initially to the student it's a mysterious device mm -hmm. and if you can demonstrate and and you could uh i'm sure that you go back and measure the voltage of that uh your your uh, supply voltage uh, and you're set at one millivolt of voltage drop you're probably right on that near that 12.6 figure because now you know that one millivolt is that voltage drop. So this yep. idea of relationships and visual references for students early on is really important. 
And yeah, that's that, that's where we started this week was uh, relationships. I mean, it's all about Ohm's law is about relationships. It's not about algebra. And if I can show this, this makes more sense. You can go back and show them, excuse me, the formula later, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. So then, I, you know, if I was really looking for a problem, I continue to test each piece of the circuit. So, so let's do this. Let's kind of got that idea. I want to go ahead and, and put a fault in here. So, and, and I, again, why I like this board is it's, it's very, very, uh, very visual. I'm going to take the light and I'm going to move it downstream a little bit and I'm going to actually put a resistance in line. I'm going to start with this top one. I'm probably going to stay on the top one. 47 ohms. That's it. And I'm going to physically put it in line on the, the positive side of the circuit just for that visual. And I'm going to turn around and instead of taking <clears throat> The, the 12 volts from the, the actual power source and going straight to the bulb, I'm going to go through this resistor and I'm going to come out of the resistor and go to the bulb. So now you can see it. In the real world, if all cars, if the problems for all cars showed up like this, we, we, we couldn't hardly charge at all because it's that obvious. But when we're learning, it's great to see it like this. So I see I've intercepted and put 47 ohms of resistance. When I turn the light on, it's not going to be as bright as it was. Fair enough. Yep. Now let's let's back up and and, and play. Let's do that that three sided test, that delta test. I was telling you. I'm going to go back and stab my meter on the battery, and I'm going to test the battery because we've been monkeying with it a little bit. Twelve six five. I'm happy. <clears throat> the second <clears throat> step was right before the load. We're expecting twelve. Six five or something close. Right. As as close to source as possible. Bam, we've only getting five point three. And I'm gonna in the vein of teaching and repetitive, I'm gonna say you have to do all three steps either way. I don't care. Yep. You found something that's that's a problem, but I want you to go ahead and do the third step too. So now you've gathered all your data, you found you have one and a half on the ground side. <clears throat> um you have current flow, so we are doing a voltage drop. And out of those three readings, I know the battery's good. I know the power arriving or the voltage arriving to the bulb is not, and I know what's leaving is correct. So I have a power side problem. And that's where I stop and go to the service man, uh, advisor and say, I need some time to diagnose it, but I'm positive I have a, a power side problem to that bulb. Yep. When they sell the labor and you go do it, and, you know, somebody made a comment in the chat yesterday about this gets given up for free and it shouldn't be, you know, you should, that's why as a tech, you should learn how to sell your, your skills, but that's another, that's another program all in itself, but you, you've, you've gotten the okay to go proceed. Then you basically, you take your meter and you continue to do what we're doing. We're just going to go back down the circuit in the direction that we know the problem is looking for that reading that we want here in the first place. So mm -hmm. I'm looking for source voltage here. I don't get it. So I'm going to go to the next place I can test it, and I still don't get it. So I'm going to go to the next connection, and this is in a car, or whatever that I that I can get to it. And all of a sudden, bam! I've got that. Pro I've I've found it. I've got my good reading. So the problem is between your first good reading and your last bad reading, and it works pretty much every time. <laughs> what better? <laughs> right. I mean, those. Now, are those of us with experience know that it it does prove out. I mean, it's it's golden. So let's say this is a a, a connector on a car, a a, a gang plug, and and when I say I'm doing this with my meter, I didn't go up to. Let's say this is a. And I'll show you an illustration. I didn't say go up and unplug that. I said, we're going to come in from each side and not disturb it. Because right now, if there's a problem in that connection, if I unplug it, there's a chance I'm going to correct that problem. Mm -hmm. Disguise it, mask it, or, you know, sometimes you get to actually see melt and, and whatever. But I want, to, I want to catch it before I go any further because I want to, I'm asking, I want to sell more of my service. And I want, to be, I want to trust my meter like I do, a, you know, if I was a pilot and I want to Verify it. So I'm going to come up with my meter and I can go like this and go down and go over that connector. And I'm, I'm not even unplugging it. And I'm finding out that seven and a quarter, I'm backwards, but seven and a quarter volts are dropped over that 
that, and all that is is a connector. That's not a load. That doesn't. That's not designed to use any voltage, and it's using seven point something two five volts. There's a there's a problem in that connector, and that's where I stop before I even unplug it and go to the service advisor and say I need you know I found the problem. I need X amount of time to to take it apart, fix it, do whatever we need to do. But we have to continue on from here. If you unplug that and just start stabbing around and then plug it back in, there's a good chance you're going to fix the problem. Richard, not even know you. Richard says you make yourself look like a genius when you uh, unplug and replug the connector. Right. But I t like I said yesterday, you, you unplug it and plug it, and let's say it's marginal and you cleaned it up by just scraping it apart and pushing it back together, and now the, now the circuit works. You go to the service advisor and say, well, I don't know, it's working now. You know, let them take it and if it comes, you know, see what happens. And as a service advisor, I had a hard time charging for I think we fixed it. I had a really easy time charging for we fixed it. And that's the, that's the caliber that we're getting to nowadays on cars. I know we're talking CAN bus and, and zeros and ones and, and, and all sorts of technology, but if you don't get this down, you're never going to get there. And, and, and it's still a matter of developing the, uh, the accuracy that you, that you, you should have. Yep. Well, I think Jimmy's going to turn us so, off. Well, okay. Is there any chance of whatever? Keep going. I know we're coming, we're coming down to the end of our, our, our webinars in general. Um, we'll, yeah, keep going. I, I hate to do that. I really do. I mean, Mr. Krieger wants to do it all the time, and we never let him, and then I ramble on here, and I'm going to be – anyway. Go. If I – if I, okay. Quit making excuses, right? Yep. Well, let's play, let's play again here. Let's uh, <clears throat> take this and just do a visual. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to move this over, and now I'm going to put <clears throat> the uh, unwanted resistance on the, the ground side. So I'm back to coming out of the switch, going into the bulb. I'm going to kind of play here and say I'm going to go from the bulb into that resistor, and then out of that resistor and turn the light on. Customer complaint, same. It looks From their point of view, it looks the same. They don't know. So you get it in your stall. Two, two cars, same problem, same day. Wow, who would have thought? But you do your three-point test. You go back to the battery. You verify you have a good, good battery because we've all had our butt kicked by that. Then we go down to right before the load. We're expecting source voltage. We test it. We've got source voltage. Bulb is dim. So now we're coming out of the bulb, and we have not close to zero. So we stop. We go sell work. We say we have a ground side problem on this particular vehicle. And we do the same steps once you've got the, the labor okay. You work your way up until you find the good reading. You come up to this gang, this gang plug. You find seven going into it. You find close to zero coming out. That's a millivolt. You found your problem in here. And you can, you can verify it by lifting up your lead and coming back and saying, I want to check that one more time just to be sure. Stay on the lead and you're at the seven volts. You've actually, your meter is seeing it. And you're trusting your meter. I've caught the seven volts that we're looking for. They're right here. <clears throat> Sell the work and you go on. Okay. One more scenario real quick, just because it, it, it's part of the, the, the three. Um, I'm going to get rid of any resistance. And I'm going to put a bad bulb in here. I say bad, a, a defective bulb. If our, our rule works, this will still do what we need to do. I put my I put my lead in the battery. I go check the battery, source voltage first. Happy with that. I'm going to come down to before the load. Happy with that. I'm going to come down to after the load. Pretty happy with that. Problem yeah. being, we now have to bring in what? Our other sense. Right. What's the that performance of the load? Right. That is not lit. So we've validated this is good. We validated this is good. There's where our problem is. We don't have to go any further. Could be the gang plug to the bulb. Could be the socket. Could be bulb, right? Yep. Okay. And just for fun, just to take it to the next level, this isn't a bad bulb. This is just an LED, and it's put in backwards. So now when <laughs> I do it... Um, I can show you something really kind of fun. We're going to do the 
before, after, it's even less on the. So, um, I guess really the only other scenario <clears throat> would be the one that I said don't overlook in the first place, and that's if that's down. Yep. If you have a weak battery, <clears throat> it's still going to work the same thing, except when you take your first step, you're going to go, eh, I'm done. There's really no point in going past this and doing step two and three until you have one right. Fair enough? Yep. I would, so, yeah. You, are you, what's next? I think that's it. I mean, I'm going to stop the recording now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right.